Big 8% increase in inventory this week. We'll take a look to see how unprecedented or not that move is. Home prices are strong, new record high, actually. And so what's actually going on out there? Well, that's what we're going to take a look at. Each week, Altos Research tracks every home for sale in the country. We analyze all the pricing and all the supply and demand and changes in that data, and we make it available to you before you see it in the traditional channels. If you aren't using Altos and our market reports with your buyers and sellers, now might be the right time to step up. Everybody needs to know what's going on. Go to altosresearch.com, book a free consult with our team to get started. I'm Mike Simonson. I'm the CEO of Altos Research, and here's what we're looking at in the data for May 23rd, 2022. Inventory growth is the story of the day. Available inventory of unsold single-family homes in the U.S. rose 8.2% this week to 344,000 homes. That's an increase of 26,000 more homes than last week for buyers to choose from. Is it the biggest jump ever? At an absolute level, 26,000 is actually not unprecedented uh, for 25,000 for that to grow in a week. Uh, but since we are coming off the record lows, that as a percentage, maybe that is the biggest jump we've seen. At 344,000 homes, we now have 6% more inventory than last year, climbing very quickly. Uh, in the past, we've done some work that shows how year-over-year -year inventory changes are predictive of price changes another year in the future. So uh, inventory rose, for example, a little bit, uh, you can see here, between 2018 and 2019. Prices barely rose between the spring of 2019 and 2020 until the pandemic hit and then and changed everything. But based on the fact that we're seeing solid year-over-year -year inventory gains now, it's looking like home prices will be flat in the next year in 2023. I don't usually speculate on home price changes that far out in the future. Uh, there are so many variables between uh, now and then, economic variables and everything else in the world, that 18 months, is it's almost random. But based on this signal, I'd bet on unchanged home prices in 2023 over 2022. I don't see any signal of price crash, uh, and it's way too early for me to set that in stone, but that's what it looks like from here. Um, I have a few other things to note about this week's inventory change. In this view here, we have the weekly inventory change in available inventory. Uh, above the line are weeks when inventory grew. Below the line are weeks when inventory declined. Each color is a year. So at the far right end of the chart over here, the dark brown you can see this week spiked to, to uh, 26,000 more homes. The light brown at the far end of the far left, far right side of the chart is uh, the projected change for the rest of the year, each week for the rest of the year. This view highlights some interesting things for us. First of all, you can see 2020, the pandemic year when inventory fell almost every week. That's the, the light blue there in the, in the middle of the chart. You know, Americans were buying everything in sight. Uh, next, I'll point out the labels at the, the highest spike for each of the years. That spike is quite commonly the third week of May. So we had just had our biggest inventory gains of the year just now, and that's kind of totally to be expected. Uh, the big spike in 2016, that's the dark blue on the, the left end here, is um, uh, it was actually bigger, 27,000 that week, um, and that was... April of that year, but um, most of these years in here, the, the peak inventory change is the third week of May. So um, in 2016, it was only two and a half percent because there's a million homes already on the market, not 8% like today. But what this tells us is that we can expect inventory to grow this year, but um, don't bet on like a parabolic kind of trajectory. Like, I don't expect, for example, repeats of this week 
going forward. We can see these, if we see these spikes continue or getting bigger from here, like that'll be a really big signal. But what we, what we know is more inventory, more selection for buyers, slower market times. And you can see the light brown section here at the far right. We, we forecast a much more normal seasonal return uh, later in the year. Normally, you'd see inventory dip at the holidays like Memorial Day and definitely on the 4th of July. This year, we're f forecasting a slowdown in inventory growth those weeks, but not necessarily a drop like normal years. So the difference, the big difference is going to be how all that will feel to sellers who are watching the insatiable demand of the last few years suddenly be satiated. Uh, and this is how that new supply growth turns into our immediate sales tracker. This week, 27,000 of the new listings went into contract essentially immediately. That's a lot of homes. That's still a lot of bidding wars. It's a lot of pent up demand. But because we had so many new listings, total new listings at the market, the percentage that were immediate sales continued to decline. So we have lots of immediate sales, but the light colored portion of the line here is slightly smaller than last week. We're at 24% of the new listings selling immediately. Last week was 25. Last year was 26% of that set. So this is tapering off. I would actually say that immediate sales are still coming in stronger than I would expect. Um, I expected to see much more uh, abrupt slowdown, but it's, it's proving to be more gradual, at least so far as the market change. And, and, and when we look across the country, there may be local markets where that is uh, changing more dramatically, more quickly. Okay, on to prices. We hit a new record high in home prices this week. The median price of a single family home in the U.S. is $443,000. Remember how I said that, that home prices now can be seen as a, a function of inventory changes a year ago? So, well, a year ago, inventory was plummeting, so it's no surprise that we, you know, home prices are 11% are higher than last year at this time. What, what I do expect is that, you know, we're finally going to get after this week a, a summer pricing plateau, somewhere around this $440,000 range for the midsummer. Uh, you can see last year that we plateaued at three ninety nine. dollars uh, for the summer. 2022, prices kept rising, but that's the anomaly year. It is uh, notable that uh, the price of the new listings has not yet declined. Normally, by this time of year, that cohort has plateaued and started ticking down already. I think this is the same phenomenon as we're seeing with the immediate sales. Like, there's still a lot of buyers. Many of them have had their financing lined up for a long time and are only now finding their opportunities to buy. So that demand is real and has only just now started to ease off. So the light colored line hasn't really ticked down yet, which is, uh, again, more strength than I would have guessed at this point. Uh, some of those listings aren't getting the offers they'd hoped for and they're taking price cuts. The percent of homes on the market with price cuts rose to almost 22% this week. You can see the dark red line here climbing quickly. Each line here is a year. Uh, and it looks by the end, it looks like by the end of summer, we'll be back into our normal 30% range, a third of the homes having taken price cuts. That'll feel scary for sellers, but it'll actually be very normal and much more healthy. Uh, I would like to point out though, that four of the West's, the U.S. West's most skyrocketing markets of the pandemic, Idaho, Arizona, Utah, Nevada, those are now at the top of our statewide price cuts list. Um, th this tells us that the biggest, the boom markets on the way up will also be the first ones to slow. And we actually could see it a little bit last fall too. Um, and then we resumed our our boom this spring so but as homes sit a little longer that's when the price cuts start to happen and we can see market time is picking up uh, across different price points uh, and will lead to more price cuts soon so again this is how that the market moves in those phases right the inventory bills now 
We'll start seeing price reductions. That leads to a, de- a decrease in the price of new listings. And if we approach the end of the year with, say, like 37% price reductions, like, like we did in 2018, like that's how we can then foresee 0%, little or no home price growth for 2023. It's a long way off, but that's sort of where the, the arc is pointing us at this time. As of right now, inventory is building rapidly. It's the third week of May, so like that happens like clockwork. This is a bigger jump, though, in than in many years, and it really shows how the market is changing. If you need to stay on top of the market or you need your buyers and sellers to know what's happening and be prepared, that's why we created Altos Research. Go to altosresearch.com, schedule a consult with our team so you can use the market data in your business with your clients. Uh, I'm so fascinated to see what's happening each week and how the market changes themselves. But uh, next week is a Memorial Day. It's Memorial Day holiday. I'll be traveling. I may not get the video out, but I will try to share some of the data on Twitter with followers there. So you can find me, Mike Simonson, on Twitter. Um, you know, things are moving so quickly. So we'll, we'll see. I, m- I maybe uh, want to share if I see something interesting in the data next week. Okay, but that's all the data we have time for this week. Next video is probably in two weeks. We'll see you then.